Hi, this is Chris, and we're taking a look at questions 16 through 18 here in section 3 of SAT practice test 4. So for question 16, we see this figure, and the question at, uh, says Jim has a triangular shelf system that attaches to his shower head. The total height of the system is 18 inches, as we see here. There are three parallel shelves as shown above. What is the maximum height in inches of a shampoo bottle that can stand upright on the middle shelf? So they want to know how tall could this shampoo bottle be. And here we see that since these shelves are parallel, that these segments will tell us the proportion of the shelf compared to that total diagonal. And proportionally, right, since we're looking at similar triangles here, that would also equal the proportion of the height that each shelf represents out of that total of 18. So basically, for the shampoo bottle, this height is going to be relevant to this diagonal segment 3x. And 3x out of our total, our total diagonal here, if you add these up, x, 3x, and 2x, that's going to add up to 6x. So it's 3x out of 6x. It's basically half of your total, and that's going to equal our height, we'll call that h over 18 for that vertical height. So when we go to simplify, this reduces to 1 half, and we have 1 half equals h over 18, and when you cross multiply, you get 2h equals 18, divided by 2, and h equals 9. So the height for that middle shelf, for that shampoo bottle, the maximum height will be 9. It's half of our total vertical height of 18. Now let's take a look at question 17. It says in the triangle above, the sine of x is 0.6. What is the cosine of y? And if you've watched our other videos, then hopefully you already know this identity, but it's certainly worth memorizing because it doesn't necessarily show up every test, although close to it, but if you do get a question like this and you know this identity, you can get it right in probably five seconds. But the identity is that the sine of x is equal to the cosine of y. Whenever you're talking about a right triangle, the sine of one angle of your acute angles, not the 90 degree angle, but of your other two acute angles, the sine of one is equal to the cosine of the other and vice versa. So here they give us sine of x is 0.6. They want the cosine of the other, which means that that's also going to be 0.6. We can go ahead and plug that in, bubble it in, and move on. So again, this is a really important identity to know, not just for getting a question like this correct, but as far as a time saver goes, it's a huge time saver, even on some pretty tough SAT math questions, and especially a grid in like this one. All right, let's take a look at 18. <clears throat> they say for what real value of x is the equation above true. So basically they want the value of x that would make this true. Now this one's a little bit more complicated than your typical trinomial because we have four terms. And generally speaking, when you have four terms and you go to factor it, you wanna do something that we call factor by grouping. And when we do factor by grouping, you're gonna group them into pairs and you're gonna factor out what they have in common. So here, both terms, have at least an x squared. We can factor out an x squared from that first factor, leaving us with x minus 5. And we can factor out a 2. These are both divisible by 2 from that second factor. So that would be plus 2 or positive 2 there, and then times x minus 5. And this whole thing equals 0. Now, since you have this factor in common, which is the whole goal when you're factoring by grouping, then we can pair these other two pieces together as one factor. This is the same thing as saying x squared plus 2, and then times x minus 5. Because if you think about it, the x squared distributes, and then so does the 2. So that's why it can be written like this, but it can be condensed to look like this version here. And whenever you're dealing with factors set equal to 0, you can set each one equal to 0 and solve. So here, if we have x squared plus 2 equals 0, when we subtract 2 from both sides, that would give us an x squared equals negative 2. And is it possible to have a squared term equal to a negative? No, definitely not. So that one is not a possible solution. However, when you add 5 to both sides, 
you get x equals 5, and this works. This is a real value that would make this equation true. So for number 18, 